Miraculous Ladybug fans returned to their favorite franchise with a refreshing take on the story when Ladybug and Cat Noir the movie premiered last year. The film returned to the beginning, revisiting the origins of Ladybug and Cat Noir through the creative direction of the series' producer Jeremy Zag. Fans love the film as it stayed true to the source material's themes and characters while also speedrunning plot points that took the series five seasons to complete. By the time the credits roll, Ladybug and Cat Noir have defeated Hawk Moth, shared their secret identities, and fallen in love. Completing an entire arc under two hours is no easy feat, but it opens the film franchise for new stories and interpretations about who Ladybug and Cat Noir will become. Promotional art for the sequel has already dropped and fans were surprised to find someone new donning the cat miraculous. While the sequel can branch away from the original series, becoming a unique story of its own. In today's video, we will evaluate the first film and how it reflected the source material to determine why Adrian may choose to give up the cat miraculous. Adrian, I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Why do you care? Number 1. Spending Time with Gabriel while Gabriel isn't a main character, he plays a significant role in the series. The audience knows his actions, motivations, and belief system throughout the series and can watch him fall further from redemption with each passing episode. The approach of showing Gabriel's life and the reasons behind his questionable choices makes him an easy villain with whom to sympathize. However, many in the fandom agree that his increasingly hostile behavior, even toward loved ones, made him irredeemable. Anyone who has watched Miraculous Ladybug will have a strong opinion about Gabriel because the series allows five seasons to develop his character by skewing his morals and making him desperate enough to do anything to achieve his goals. The original Gabriel is known to purposefully akumatize Adrian, knowingly fights him as Cat Noir and locks him within a room, forcing him to experience his worst fears on repeat. For many reasons, he stops being a good father after the death of his wife, as his obsession with resurrecting Emily clouds his judgment. The film takes an entirely different approach to Gabriel as it doesn't lean so heavily into his descent into near madness or his capability of going too far. For example, there is a scene at the beginning of the film where Gabriel tries to reach out to Adrian while looking genuinely distressed and grief-stricken. Still, Adrian makes it clear that his relationship with his father had grown strained while they both struggled to adapt to life without Emily. However, Adrian shunning Gabriel's attempt at conversation comes down with no repercussions, whereas in the series, Gabriel may have coerced Adrian into speaking with him while showing little emotional vulnerability. There's also a significant difference in how Gabriel and Adrian interact regarding one another's double lives. In the series, Gabriel never hesitated to take Adrian's power for himself when learning that Adrian is Cat Noir, effectively betraying his son to achieve his goals. Whereas in the film, the moment Gabriel learns Cat Noir's identity, he stops his actions immediately and gives up trying to steal the Miraculouses, despite being a moment away from success. Gabriel and Adrian embrace at the end as if finally understanding what the other had endured and what drove them to their diverging life paths. The film doesn't explore what happens to Gabriel after the final battle, yet it seems Ladybug and Cat Noir hadn't patrolled Paris between the fight and the school dance, as Adrian appears to miss seeing the girl he fell in love with. It's safe to assume that Ladybug took back the Butterfly Miraculous and returned it to Master Fu, preventing Hawk Moth from returning. Therefore, with more time on his hands and realizing how far his father was willing to go to abandon their grief, it's possible Adrian may choose to give up the Cat Miraculous to handle his family affairs and repair his relationship with his father, which is much healthier than the one between the series' counterparts. I understand now. The only power stronger than death is love. Number 2. Prioritizing his personal life at the beginning of the series, Adrian's personal life is nearly non-existent. He has to convince his father to attend public school, but he's rarely allowed to spend time with his friends. He can't invite anyone over, and most of his day is filled with meeting his tutors, friends practice, and photo shoots. Even his romantic relationships become controlled, as Gabriel discourages Adrian's relationship with Marinette in favor of Kagami. Adrian is notably unhappy with his lifestyle, which is one of the main appeals of becoming Cat Noir. As a superhero, he's free to make choices and be himself without restraint restrictions. The film doesn't hone in on this part of Adrian's life as much, possibly because Gabriel doesn't submit his son to the same rigorous schedule and expectations. For example, Adrian attends school with the other characters although he appears to study independently rather than attend classes. He also goes to the fair with his friends and is asked to return home because Gabriel is knowingly about to release akumatized villains in the same location. He also roams Paris alone, traveling toward the theater where his mother once performed. If anything, Adrian's depressed behavior can be attributed to losing both his parents, his mother in death, and his father to grief. 
While grief is an all-encompassing emotion that never goes away in totality, it is possible to coexist with it, especially as more time passes since the initial loss. Now that Adrian has friends and a potential girlfriend in Marinette, his social life could skyrocket in the sequel. He may find that he prefers his real life over the sanctuary he found in Cat Noir and chooses to spend his free time with those he loves while doing the things he loves, like fencing or playing in a band. Wow, these are really good. Thanks. Number 3. A Cataclysmic Incident There's no denying that Adrian receives one of the most dangerous powers from Master Fu. As far as sheer destruction is concerned, nothing compares to the Cat Miraculous and its capabilities. In the series, we learn that its version of the Cat Miraculous, Plague specifically, was responsible for events like the dinosaur extinction and the sinking of Atlantis. It's also strong enough to kill someone outright or cause a fatal illness that gradually spreads throughout the body. Adrian has experienced the pain of a cataclysm firsthand and must drag himself out of fights or rely on other heroes for help while recovering. The sequel could open with Ladybug and Cat Noir patrolling Paris. However, without Hawkmoth to create villains, the heroes may have turned their talents to catching regular, non-superpowered criminals. Doing so likely doesn't require using their abilities often, but there's always a chance for a cataclysm to get out of hand. Cat Noir could slip, be attacked, or be pushed at the wrong moment, causing his attack to land in the wrong place. His cataclysm could cause a full-scale disaster, like creating a sinkhole in the road or toppling the Eiffel Tower with civilians nearby. He could also cataclysm another person, causing them to become grievously injured. While the television and film versions of Adrian are different, there's no denying that causing widespread destruction could traumatize them equally. Adrian's massive mistake could scare him away from being Cat Noir. Understanding his fear and respecting his boundaries, Marinette could return his miraculous to Master Fu, helping him choose a new wielder to serve as her partner in battle. I have more than a plan. I have nine lives. Number four, someone forces his hand. In the series, it's revealed in the fifth season that Emily used the broken peacock Miraculous to create Adrian, as she couldn't have children naturally. However, using the broken Miraculouses causes her to become fatally ill, ultimately leading to her death. Adrian, meanwhile, is unaware of his origins as a scent monster or that his amok is shared between Gabriel and Natalie, allowing each of them to influence his decisions. It's unknown if the storyline will carry into the film franchise, but the possibility is there as Emily is deceased in both iterations. If Adrian is a scent monster, someone like Gabriel or Natalie could have his amok. Knowing that his son is Cat Noir, Gabriel could force Adrian to give up his miraculous to keep him out of harm's way. Additionally, if Natalie becomes Mayura in the sequel and knows of Cat Noir's identity, she may make Adrian retire because she doesn't want to harm or fight someone she cares for. I hate you. We'll see about that. Follow me. Ladybug and Cat Noir the movie provided fans with a refreshing and fast-paced retelling of the origin story, staying true to the beloved themes and characters of the franchise. The film's ability to condense a significant amount of plot into a concise runtime while maintaining the essence of the series demonstrates its creative direction and plans to take the retelling in a different direction. With the upcoming sequel poised to introduce new narratives and character developments, there's no telling where Marinette and Adrian will be when the sequel begins or how they feel about continuing their double lives as heroes. As fans eagerly await the sequel's release, the question of Adrian's potential decision regarding the Cat Miraculous adds even more anticipation to the wait. You will lose everything. I have nothing to lose. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. And as long as love will reign over fear in your heart, you don't need a mask to be who you already are.